a doctor, an archaeologist, a medical student, an alien, a stripper, a magician, and more. Did you know that there have been many versions of Dr. Fate in the DC Omniverse aside from the recently known character named Kent Nelson shown in the Black Adam movie? Representing the Lord of Order by the power of Naboo, Dr. Fate is a superhero created to fight the forces of the Lords of Chaos. Naboo is a cosmic being with almost limitless magical power who arrived on Earth billions of years ago to battle chaos and resides on the helmet being worn by the chosen Dr. Fate. Welcome to DC Nez and today let's meet every DC character who donned the helmet of Naboo or every version of Dr. Fate. The origins of Dr. Fate begins with Naboo billions of years ago. When the universe was just in its infancy, two elemental forces were born, the Lords of Order and the Lords of Chaos, and they had a consistent struggle for supremacy. The Lords of Order first existed on the planet called Cilia as the first sentient race in the universe, a race of incorporeal magical beings. After some millennia, around 3500 BC, one of the Lords of Order arrived on Earth from Cilia and became Naboo the Wise, a counselor to the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. Naboo became the holder of many powerful talismans. He created the Scarab of ka Re in the 26th century BC with the help of a time traveler from the 20th century to overthrow Vandal Savage, who at that time was the pharaoh called ka Re. This scarab was lost in time and was rediscovered in the 20th century by the archaeologist Dan Garrett, who became the first Blue Beetle. The Amulet of Anubis, Naboo's most powerful talisman, was created in 2025 BC from the cutter of the magical gem world, and this amulet then became home to the Lords of Order. Around 1260 BC, during the reign of Ramses, Naboo became a royal advisor and was humbled in the battle by the Spectre who killed Ramses for his crimes against the Hebrews. He and Tet Adam, now known as Black Adam, then became advisors to Prince Khufu, the first incarnation of Hawkman, when a Thanagarian starship crashed in Egypt that led to the discovery of the Ant Metal that Prince Khufu later used for a flying armor. From the Ant Metal, Naboo and Tet Adam forged a war gauntlet called the Claw of Horus. Naboo later faced one of the first incarnations of Wotan around this time. Mystically debilitated by previous battles with Wotan, Naboo placed himself into a trance inside a tomb to heal his injuries until being discovered by the Nelsons in the modern era thousands of years later. Follow my voice! Now, let's meet the Dr. Fates. Of course, let's start off with the first Dr. Fate, Kent Nelson. We first saw Dr. Fate during the Golden Age of Comics from the 1940s. Powered by Naboo and a founding member of the Justice Society of America, Dr. Kent Nelson aka Dr. Fate is a powerful sorcerer and agent of the Lords of Order. Together with his archaeologist father, Sven Nelson, they explored the Valley of Ur in Mesopotamia when they found an underground pyramid which housed Naboo, an ancient immortal being from the planet Cilia. Naboo had been held in suspended animation for thousands of years. When Kent released Naboo, the lever released a poisonous gas that killed his father. Naboo would then make Kent his new host and teach him the secrets of the universe. He gave him incredible powers through total molecular control and had him serve with the Lords of Order in their never-ending fight against the Lords of Chaos. Naboo then gave him an amulet, cloak, and helmet and became Dr. Fate. His first battle was against the evil sorcerer Wotan. Naboo would guide him on many adventures but Kent oftentimes would have no memories of these adventures. He would later meet Inza Kramer while traveling through Alexandria, who would become his longtime romantic partner. With Inza, he stopped Magno the Mighty, stopped the Norms, defeated two species of evil spacemen, destroyed the Lost Book of Thoth, and challenged by Mr. Who, the Clock, the Red Sage, and the evil genius Karkul. He soon pursued his medical degree and became a doctor. He would then work with the Spectre to destroy a military gateway to a netherworld of demons. And at the request of President Roosevelt, he and the other costume heroes formed the Justice Society of America. Eventually, Kent Nelson realized that Naboo's helmet is taking over his body so he created the Half Helm. 
The Half-Helm limited his powers, but he had more control and still had many other abilities. He would later become a member of the new Justice League and defeated Darkseid. In the Battle of Chaos and Order, the strain caused for Inza to commit suicide. Kent wanted to die as well, but Naboo did not allow it until he found a new host. When Kent found Eric Strauss as the next host, Naboo allowed Kent to die. Dr. Fate's powers include Divine Empowerment, Telekinesis, Invulnerability, Teleportation, Eldritch Blast, Extreme Magic, and more. The Prime Earth origin of Kent Nelson is still very much similar to the Golden Age origin as the 12-year-old Kent Nelson who followed his father Sven Nelson into the Valley of Ur. His father saw a prophecy about a primeval catacomb belonging to an extraterrestrial wizard, then spent their family's entire life savings for a crazy expedition that would get them to the valley. Although mocked by their neighbors, they finally discovered an ancient tomb filled with cryptic writings. In the tomb, bound within a false body, the Lord of Order Naboo somewhat manipulated Kent to pull a nearby lever that released Naboo but also released a poisonous gas that killed his father. As payment for his sacrifice, Naboo flooded the young boy's head with unfathomable knowledge and reconstructed him to his physical peak and mental peak, transmuting him into a being of pure order. Naboo then ordered Kent to kill his false body. Kent blew the body apart with his newfound power and revealed the helmet hidden within. Kent with Naboo will then become a great hero and a force of order and eventually became a founding member of the Justice Society of America. Later, when the JSA was erased from the timeline after the Flashpoint event, Dr. Fate's history remained largely intact. In the DC Extended Universe, in the movie Black Adam of 2022, the Kent Nelson version of Dr. Fate is one of the main proponents of the Justice Society and is portrayed by Pierce Brosnan. Inza Kramer is the wife of Kent Nelson and she has a certain mastery of occultism and is possibly more magically talented than Kent Nelson. When she was a single woman, Inza Kramer was particularly in tune with nature and the planet. This caught the attention of Dr. Fate and consequently, the villain Wu Tan who tried to kill her as a form of revenge against Dr. Fate. Inza then became the frequent partner of Dr. Fate against unknown threats. Dr. Fate then soon revealed to Inza his secret identity as Kent Nelson. This disclosure added to their attraction and when Kent became a medical doctor, Inza became a nurse. After that, the two of them became engaged and shared even more time together. Inza and Kent soon got married and lived in the Tower of Fate. Together, the mystical energies of Dr. Fate kept them youthful. However, Inza would always find herself alone in the tower while Kent went out on various adventures. She became fed up with the situation and went out to help Fate against Callis. They won but Inza became jealous of Fate's control over Kent. She resented the fact that her husband had to be gone while she remained in the Tower of Fate. However, Inza's luck changed when Vern Copeland, the new director of the Natural History Museum, invited her to give a speech at the museum. While conversing academics over dinner, Inza recognized that Copeland was romantically interested in her. In due course, she gave in to this desire and fell for him. When Kent discovered her infidelity, they fought and got separated. But Inza soon came back just in time to help him against two powerful enemies. Inza and Kent understood that their love would allow them to survive any struggles. Some years passed and an interstellar event called the Kali Yuga started that allowed chaos to take over. Naboo was weakened and Kent and Inza started to age rapidly. Inza died because of this, leaving Kent alone with Naboo. Inza and Kent were then resurrected in new younger bodies but discovered that only Inza can transform into Dr. Fate. Then the Nelsons were soon reunited and began to share the power of Dr. Fate. Eric and Linda Strauss Created by James DeMatteis and Keith Giffen to replace the original Dr. Fate, Eric Strauss first appeared in 1987 as a child born to a wealthy but abusive millionaire, Henry Strauss. His father was abusive to him and his mother, Rebecca Strauss. 
After his mother died, his father married a young woman named Linda. Eventually, Eric's father died and Linda became Eric's legal guardian. When Eric was about 10, the now elderly Kent Nelson discovered him and swayed him to accompany Kent back to the Tower of Faith in Salem, Massachusetts. There, Nabu persuaded Eric that he was preordained to become the new host body for his power and as such, the next mortal to take on the mantle of Dr. Fate. Nabu used his power to age Eric into adulthood and made him wear Nabu's helmet, cloak, and amulet. Eric then became the new Dr. Fate. Nabu employed greater control over Eric than he did with Kent Nelson. However, his mystical training was severe and often surprising. Eric would found himself in battle against a powerful Lord of Chaos named Typhon right after he wore the helmet. Eric was defeated but he soon discovered that in order to win over Typhon and utilize the full powers of Dr. Fate, he was destined to merge with his stepmother Linda Strauss and together they became the new Dr. Fate. Eric and Linda persisted on their relentless training by Naboo. After counteracting the destruction of the universe, Eric became sick and couldn't function effectively as Dr. Fate, leaving Linda become Fate all by herself. His illness became worse and it was later divulged as a consequence of the magic used by Naboo to age Eric into adulthood. Eric was then kidnapped by Darkseid and was taken to Apocalypse where he died despite Linda's attempts to save him. However, Eric did not pass on as his soul was sooner transferred to the body of a freshly diseased man named Eugene Debilia. Meanwhile, Linda suffered because of Eric's death and it affected her performance as Dr. Fate. When Dr. Benjamin Stoner became the anti-fate once more, Linda was forced to amalgamate with Naboo in order to stop him. Although they succeeded, Linda was terminally impacted by the encounter. She died afterwards but her soul was placed in the body of Eugene's wife, Wendy. The two became the guardians of the Dibelius' daughter, Reina, a young girl who has a cosmically important destiny ahead of her because of the Phantom Stranger. Next is Jared Stevens. This look of Jared Stevens as Fate was first introduced in October 1994. At that time, the Earth-13 dimension of the multiverse was not yet identified. However, it is said in Fate issue number 0 that the events in that comic series have transpired in the darker realms of the DC Universe. In this series, Jared was an art smuggler who was hired to recover the cloak, amulet, and helmet of Dr. Fate from Egypt and was summoned afterwards by the previous holders of Dr. Fate, Kent and Inza Nelson. The artifacts rejected the Nelsons and they were then killed by the demonic agents of the kingdom who planned to steal the amulet. When Jared tried to use the amulet against the demons, it exploded and bestowed him mystical abilities that damaged his right arm and gave him a red ink tattoo on his right eye. Jared used the cloak to bandage his arm. His arm was immediately healed but only if it is wearing the cloak. He then went on to melt the helmet and turn the mystic metal into a dagger and axe-shaped darts. Although he first refused his new role with Naboo, he soon found himself working with the JSA. He was later killed by Mordru with his own dagger and his soul resided inside the amulet. During the New 52 relaunch of DC, Jared Stevens was then seen on the magical universe of Earth-13. Here, Fate is a hot-headed member of the League of Shadows. He has many similar magical capabilities to the usual Dr. Fate except for the fact that he doesn't wear the helmet of Naboo. Aside from creating magical constructs and force fields, this version of Fate has a magical blade or called Fate Dagger that he used to kill the vampire Sivana and he can fight in hand-to-hand -hand combat. This Fate is quite feisty and always angry but he is still afraid of Super Demon Etrigan. When Earth-43 vampires tried to conquer Earth-13, he killed the vampire Sivana from Earth-43 that then gave them an advantage against the vampires. Fate or Jared Stevens was also summoned by the Psycho Pirate in Earth Omega to be part of the team of supervillains from different Earths and they are called Injustice Incarnate. Next is Hector Hall. Believed to be the greatest version of Dr. Fate as he grew up surrounded by superheroes, 
Hector Hall is the son of Carter and Shaira Hall, also known as Hawkman and Hawk Girl, who are the Golden Age reincarnations of an ancient Egyptian pharaoh and his wife. They were cursed by Hatset to be reincarnated in many lifetimes. Unlike the previous Doctor Fates who mainly represent the Lord of Order, Hector Hall's Doctor Fate is an agent of balance as Hawkman and Hawk Girl reincarnated as Hawk and Dove in modern times who represented the Lord of Chaos and Lord of Order respectively. However, Hatset's curse also affected their offspring. The curse of the ancient Egyptian god of death, Seketh, foretold the combination of the silver scarab and the Eye of Ra that would create a worldwide disaster. Thus, Hector Hall was born near a dig site in Cairo without a soul so that he could be the vessel for the silver scarab, an agent of vengeance called forth by Hatset. Feeling ignored by his parents, Hector while in college created a suit made of ant metal. Hector Hall dated Lyra Trevor, daughter of Wonder Woman and Steve Trevor. Lyra became the next Fury and Hector became the Silver Scarab. When they were denied membership in the Justice Society of America, with the help of Star Spangled Kid, Huntress and Power Girl, Fury and Silver Scarab created the Infinity Inc. together with Albert Rothstein aka Nuclon and later Atom Smasher, Northwind, Brainwave Jr., Jade and Obsidian. When the curse of Hatset came forth, the reincarnated Silver Scarab fought Infinity Inc. alongside Hatset and summoned the Eye of Ra. The Infinity Inc. won but at the cost of Hector's life. Like his parents, Hector Hall would also cheat death and his consciousness had been cast into a fake dream dimension created by Brute and Glob, former servants of Morpheus the Sandman. In his new role, he had the chance of frequently visiting Lyta Trevor and together, they lived in the dream dimension and had a son named Daniel. When the Sandman came back, Morpheus sent Hector back to the realm of the dead and told Lyta that their child is destined to become the next Sandman. Again, like his parents, Hector was reincarnated and this baby was chosen to adopt the vestments of Dr. Fate. The Star Spangled Kid placed the Scarabaeus into the baby's chest and the baby was transformed into an adult as Dr. Fate. He would soon defeat Mordru and placed him inside the amulet. He then became part of the Justice Society while searching for his wife. He traveled inside the amulet of Anubis and found Lyta in a coma cursed by Mordru. He traveled to Gemworld to reverse the spell. This version of Dr. Fate has the capability of becoming free of Naboo's total control. When Naboo presented Hector with his destiny, Hector did not accept it and he went on creating his own path. Hector and the rest of the JSA then defeated a demon called Legacy who was actually revealed to be an old villain called Wizard. When Hector was successful in reversing Mordru's spell, he found out that the woman in the coma is actually Dawn Granger and not Lyta. Hector was both sad and disappointed that he still hadn't found Lyta. Eventually, Hector has operated as Dr. Fate from Salem with Naboo as a silent advisor. Unlike his predecessors who are unable to control the helmet, Hector is able to socialize with his surroundings and is usually comfortable in his role. When faced with the atrocious magical villain called Curse, an enemy that Naboo had not completely defeated himself, Naboo tried to manipulate Hector once more but Hector decked Naboo, revived his body and defeated the Curse. On a later adventure to Kandak with the JSA, Naboo tried to control Hector once again but with the help of the previous Doctor Fates residing in the amulet, they trapped Naboo in the amulet and discovered that Lyta was actually imprisoned by Naboo to manipulate Hector. Hector and Lyta were then reunited in the end. Next is Mordru. A prominent lord of chaos and a major enemy of Hector Hall, Mordru is an energy being from the world Cilia. Mordru is said to exist before the universe was created and will exist after its end. However, Mordru requires a host in order to subsist. His first host was Lord Rin, who sought more power and was consumed by Mordru. He then tried to claim the power of Dr. Fate by first slaying several agents of order and chaos, including Kid Eternity and Jared Stevens. 
He later tried to acquire the child of Hawk and Dove, which is said would become a very powerful sorcerer in the universe and is actually the reincarnation of Hector Hall. When Hector Hall turned to Dr. Fate, Mordru was imprisoned in the Amulet of Anubis. Mordru escaped and switched bodies with Dr. Fate, where he possessed the power of Dr. Fate and the Star Heart from Green Lantern and joined Eclipso and Obsidian in enveloping the world in darkness. The JSA then went to Gemworld to free Arion, the original owner of Mordru's body. This weakened Mordru, allowing Hector Hall to become Dr. Fate again. Dr. Fate vanquished Mordru and imprisoned him in the Rock of Eternity. Later, Mordru tricked Shazam into freeing him. He attacked the JSA and it was only after the return of JJ Thunder and the Thunderbolt was Mordru defeated by sending him to an unknown location. When Hector Hall and his wife died and entered the Dreaming and Naboo was killed by the Rampaging Spectre during the Infinite Crisis, the next fate is Kent V. Nelson. However, the helmet would first pass through many hands before him and they are Detective Chimp, Black Alice, Ibis the Invincible, Sargon the Sorcerer, and Zoriel. The psychiatrist Dr. Kent V. Nelson had a really good life before finding the helmet. He is a grandnephew of Kent Nelson, the original Dr. Fate. He had a lovely wife and daughter, recognition in the community, a well-to-do practice, and taught an annual seminar at the university. However, he had an affair with the student in the university. His wife left with their daughter when she found out and this pushed Kent to neglecting his profession and falling ultimately into depression. Then, one of his patients claimed he was being tortured by an unearthly creature that gave him a psychotic episode, driving his car along the Las Vegas Strip, running down several people. Thirteen died and many more were wounded. Kent then used his family's gift of telepathy and saw the patient's memories. Kent was blamed for their deaths and for neglecting his patients. He was sued by the families, lost his house and his job, divorced by his wife, and was left alone by his lover. He became a derelict on the streets, joining in bum fight videos for money. While sleeping in a dumpster, he rummaged around for something he could use to cover himself against the storm. In the trash, he found the helmet of fate which had landed in that dumpster after traveling through the realms of existence. Thinking only of using it to cover his head, Kent wore it only to discover the helmet taking him on a mental expedition of its past. Then the helmet took him on a tour of his own recent past. He would soon meet his enemy, the demon Negal. Kent V. Nelson learned spells but used the helmet for gambling. He met the occult bookstore owner Maddie, who provided an intense interdimensional meditation with him for his pains. Despite Maddie and the helmet, he still sunk into more depression and almost drowned in a nearby fountain until he was saved by a young comic artist named Inza. However, the demon Negal liquefied Inza. Kent gave the helmet to Maddie, but Maddie was brought to despair by Nigal's sidekick Imp and brought to him alongside the captured Nelson and the remains of Inza. They would soon get help from a strange magical elf who shot Nigal and Imp, which also revived Inza in the process. Eventually, Kent v. Nelson helped the Justice Society against dozens of villains, in healing Mr. Terrific and against the return of Mordru. The Prime Earth version of Dr. Fate primarily revolves around Khalid Nasur, an Egyptian-American medical student who was chosen by the Egyptian gods to act as Dr. Fate and a core member of Justice League Dark. As a young child, Khalid has always dreamed of becoming a doctor. He began his education in Brooklyn College while working as an EMT. Two days before starting med school, Khalid discovered the Helmet of Fate after looking for a gift in the Brooklyn Museum. The helm started talking to him, but Khalid thought he was imagining things because of an acid trip. Because of a storm caused by Anubis, Khalid was stuck at the train station and saw a young girl stuck on the train tracks. When he helped her, he found himself in front of a speeding train. He shouted stop, and the train stopped in its tracks. Shaken, he left the station and ran back to his cat which is now possessed by the Egyptian goddess Bastet. Bastet led him back to the museum and tempted him to wear the helm and become the champion. Khaled wore the helmet and discovered the wild world of magic, 
lifting himself while discovering his command over the elements. Still not believing the situation, Khaled takes off the helm as he heard his father calling out for help. His father's taxi was crushed in an accident. Khaled lifted his father and flew, but Anubis struck down a nearby aircraft. In the fight, Khaled was aided by Thought using the Staff of Power. He defeated Anubis and went to repair the damages he had done using the helm. Khaled would soon meet his great uncle Kent Nelson, who mentored him in the ways of magic. He explained to Khaled how magic is different on every person and kind of DIY. Nonetheless, Khaled learned and soon discovered that Osiris had been behind the undead risings of mummies and the ghost of Julius Caesar. Later, Nabu took control of Khaled's body and trapped his soul in a vase in the Tower of Fate. When Manbat and the Justice League Dark visited the tower, the vase was knocked over and released Khaled. Khaled and the Justice League Dark then fought the Lords of Order and trapped Nabu. Khaled then joined the Justice League Dark in their fight against Cersei, who created a team to assault the Hall of Justice. When the team was defeated and Cersei and Eclipso possessed Wonder Woman, Khaled wore the helmet, helped Wonder Woman, and negotiated with Cersei. Much later, he is seen to be all grown up in the future state era of DC. Here, Merlin destroyed the Tower of Fate and wanted the helmet. So, Khaled bargained to become Merlin's personal oracle to save the League. Fast forward to the 31st century, we see the Lord of Order version from the Legion of Superheroes. This Dr. Fate is a green-skinned, six-armed alien sorcerer who can freeze a dimension in place, can defend his reality from chaos, and can interpret dreams. This Dr. Fate assisted the Legion of Superheroes in mystic matters and is the one who warns the Legion and the United Planets of the coming Great Darkness, the true source and embodiment of darkness in the universe. He also assisted the Legion in overpowering the future version of Mordru, who wanted to kill John Kent. This futuristic Dr. Fate was created by Mark Andriaco and Kevin Maguire. I knew what to do. And let me tell you, I was hella hot. Superhero hot. Now, let's talk about the alternate versions of Dr. Fate from different realities. From Earth 2 of the New 52 era of DC, Khaled Ben Hassan found the helmet of Dr. Fate in Egypt while escaping the grave robbers with Kendra Santos. They were hired by the World Army to find the tomb of Nabu. When Khaled found and wore the helmet of Nabu, he obtained the immense power of Nabu. However, it also made him a slave of Nabu's essence. This is also the same time Kendra's wings appeared. With the helmet, Khaled as Dr. Fate has immense magical powers that he can invoke many Egyptian deities to his command and use their varying powers such as creating energy constructs for his protection or to deflect magical attacks, releasing an Eldritch Blast, opening portals, or just doing immediate teleportations. His costume is black and gold instead of blue and gold. He became a member of the Wonders of the World, which is this Earth's version of the Justice Society, and there was a time that he hid the helmet in the Tower of Fate so no one else could find it. In the Earth-22 or the Kingdom Come universe, Nabu, one of the ancient Lords of Order, repossessed the sentience it once detained in the old Doctor Fate Kent Nelson version, but this time without the need for a human host to assume its mystical power. By channeling his consciousness through the Helm of Fate and Cloak of Destiny, this entity was known simply as Fate. He joined Batman's team and helped in teleporting his teammates to the Gulag battle. He saved numerous heroes from the nuclear bomb released by the United Nations by swallowing them with a cloak during the battle. This Doctor Fate holds the map of the multiverse and can send anyone to any reality. In the DC animated movie universe, Dr. Fate was a stripper. Steel Maxim is a stripper chosen by the Lords of Order to wield the helmet of Nabu because of his good physical condition. This version of Dr. Fate used his mystical powers to both protect order and gain personal satisfaction from his missions. At some point, he developed a romantic relationship with the Silver Banshee and in due course showed her the location of the Tower of Fate. 
Two months later, Maxim was found drinking in a bar by Knockout and Scandal Savage, who lured him to gain entry to the tower and obtain the Get Out of Hell free card. Expecting sexual encounters, Maxim blindly took them to the tower but was immediately rendered unconscious before getting the helmet. Scandal and Knockout took out the card and Maxim was stripped off his powers and kicked out of the tower. He was later found by the Suicide Squad in a strip club, interrogated then left stranded on the road. In the Young Justice animated universe, the Lords of Order empowered a human being to act as their agent. The earthly ties of the human host would allow for a greater understanding of the problems that Chaos created on Earth. Aryan was the first such agent. However, he was overpowered by the Lord of Chaos that also resulted to the sinking of Atlantis. 7,586 years after the fall of Atlantis came the rise of Babylonia under the rule of Marduk, the Babylonian name of Vandal Savage. The Lord of Chaos, Clarion, arrived and brought Starro that brought more deaths to Babylonia. Nabu, Marduk's son, perished while fighting the Starro regime. Because the Babylonians already believed that Nabu is the god of wisdom and a champion of order in his own right, the Lords of Order recruited Nabu's soul and elevated him to a higher calling as a new Lord of Order. Nabu's helmet then became the anchor for his spirit on the mortal plane. The only thing required was a human host body capable of channeling Nabu's mystic power. The hosts in Young Justice Universe were many. After Kent Nelson and Inza Kramer, the helmet came to Wally West, Kid Flash, during his fight against Clarion. Nabu did not want to let go of Wally as the host, but Kent Nelson convinced him otherwise. The helmet was then used by Aqualad in his fight against Wotan of the Injustice League. Then it came to Zatanna when she fought Clarion. Because Kent Nelson's soul was already in the afterlife, Nabu was adamant in keeping Zatanna as his host. However, Zatara, Zatanna's father, persuaded Nabu to take him instead. Zatara, now as Dr. Fate, would become a member of the Justice League. Nabu made an agreement with Zatanna that he would leave Zatara's body every year for one hour so that they could spend time together. Zatara would become Dr. Fate for many years after that until Zatanna proposed to Nabu to have rotating hosts every week between Zatara, Zatanna, Tracy Thurston, and Khalid Nasur. From the Amalgam Comics universe, the amalgamation of DC and Marvel characters, Dr. Strange Fate is a sorcerer and he is an amalgamation of DC's Dr. Fate and Marvel Comics' Dr. Strange with the alter ego of Marvel Comics' Charles Xavier. After the destruction of the Amalgam universe, Doctor Strange placed the entire Amalgam universe in a pocket dimension, thus ensuring that Strange Fate would not menace the Marvel and DC universes again. Lastly, is Doctor Chaos an evil counterpart of Doctor Fate in Earth 1? Professor Lewis Lang and his assistant Bert Belker discovered a blue helmet similar to Doctor Fate's helmet in a Sumerian dig site. The helmet possessed Bert and turned him into the sorcerer Dr. Chaos, whose costume is identical to Dr. Fate's except for a reversed color scheme. Superboy confronted him, Lana was also possessed by it, so Superboy locked up the helmet. He later reappeared in the DC Rebirth era as a guardian of the realm of chaos. So there you have it, the different DC characters who wore the helmet of fate. Who is your favorite version of Dr. Fate? The classic one or the stripper one? What do you think of Naboo? Is he really a force of good? Can you think of other DC characters that have many versions? Let us know what you think. Hit subscribe and give thanks.